So welcome everyone to the virtual Pasadena Senior Center and our Cultural Thursdays program, a grab bag of arts and culture topics. I'm Annie Lasky, the Director of Events. Thank you all for joining us today. It's great to see so many people, especially on such a beautiful day. Uh, so beautiful day, you're indoors, but you get to look at beautiful pictures. That's what we got for you. Uh, for those of you who are new to us, the Pasadena Senior Center offers ultra arts and culture programming, physical fitness, and social services to older adults. I encourage you to check out the many online programs and classes that we have scheduled, as well as information on resources for seniors in the Pasadena area. It's all at PasadenaSeniorCenter.org. We are an independent donor supported nonprofit organization now in our 60th year. We were founded in 1960. And we rely on our partners, donors, and members to continue bringing you programming such as this. I know that many of you here today are members, and I just want to thank you so much for your continued support. It means a huge amount to us. Uh, before we get started, I want to mention a couple of our next upcoming Cultural Thursdays. Next week, March 11th, we'll be in conversation with Melanie Chartoff. Uh, she's an actress and comedian, and she just published a memoir called Odd Woman Out. I just finished reading the book. Uh, I can recommend it. She's really amazing. She has an amazing life. And uh, this book, which is a series of essays, uh, is her, her life in words. Uh, the conversation with her promises to be a real kick. She's just a, a, quite a fabulous woman. So please do join us for that. It's two o'clock, just like this, next Thursday, March 11th. Uh, two weeks from now on March 18th, we will be celebrating various things Irish with a day after St. Patrick's Day program. Full disclosure, I have invited my sister to co-host with me. Uh, we are descended from the Lawless Sisters of Dublin, on my father's side. And my sister is married to an Irishman from Galway. So there will be uh, all sorts of uh, interesting Irish tidbits for you for that on March 18th. Uh, then Cultural Thursdays is going to take a couple of weeks off and we will be back on April 8th with Bob and Don's composer shows uh, focusing uh, in April on George and Ira Gershwin. Again, all of that is free at two o'clock on Thursdays. You can sign up at PasadenaSeniorCenter.org. Uh, also to let you know, on March 16th, we start a new seven session master's series. This is a ticketed program that we've been running for 36 years. And this upcoming one is Making Connections, the Intersection of Art, Culture, and Design uh, with Eleanor Schrader, who some of you may remember from our Valentine's Day history presentation. Uh, remember, members get a discount. So thank you so much. You can check all that out again, PasadenaSeniorCenter.org. Uh, we have muted uh, all of your microphones uh, during the interview and presentation, but we will have a chance to unmute following the presentation for a Q&A. You're welcome in the meantime to use the chat function if you have any questions. We will save the questions until the end of the formal presentation. It is now my pleasure to introduce today's guest. Yes. Uh, Kenny Arts is a prolific and passionate plein air painter. He's going to let us know exactly what the term plein air means to him in a few minutes. He has taken his passion for plein air painting to all the corners of Altadena and Pasadena, to the movie industry across America and to other nations as a plein air missionary to the home of a US president and beyond. Some of his greatest rewards of painting en plein air are the interesting people he meets at his easel. And I want to say that one of the greatest rewards of my job here at the Pasadena Senior Center is the incredibly wonderful people I get to meet at Zoom like Kenny. So please welcome Kenny, and I am now going to shift my spotlight for his spotlight. All right, welcome, Kenny. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to uh, that you can join me here on this little tour of my artwork. Thank you, Annie. And a special thanks to also to uh, Marie Cantor, who I believe had her hand in part of this. So I appreciate that. So I, as, uh, as Annie said, I'm passionate about plein air painting. 
And uh, in 2018, I challenged myself to see how many plein air paintings I could do that year. And I ended up with just about 400 of them. So I was doing uh, almost a painting a day. Sometimes I would actually skip a day and do a couple of them in one day. But uh, I really enjoy that. So if you add those along with the thousands and thousands of paintings I've done over the years, it adds up to quite a few. And today I'm going to show you every single one of them, okay? <laughs> no, actually, no, I'm not. I'm just kidding. Uh, but I am going to show you, I work in series and some of the series have, uh, oh, sometimes two, three hundred, two, three, four hundred paintings in each series but I'll only be able to show you four or five of them uh, uh, today. So I hope you enjoy this. And someone mentioned painting. If you want to paint while I'm talking, that's quite okay because I grew up in school doing that. I got in a lot of trouble for that, but <laughs> that's one of the ways I concentrate. I paint a lot and uh, it just helps me focus on things. So with that, let's get started. So let me... Uh, do a little switching here and uh, we'll get started on this. And I trust everything's gonna work out just fine today. We've tested this and it uh, worked out just fine. So, <clears throat> okay, so um, this right here is a scene, uh, a watercolor I did last year. And it's actually a recreation. Um, Kenny? Of, yes. It didn't come up. It didn't come up? No. Oh, no. What happened? I'm up here. <laughs> we, we, we tested it, folks, again and again. Yeah. So uh, go back out okay. and try it again, Kenny. Okay, I'll go back out. Let me, um, okay, so, okay, you can see me now, right? I can see you now. Okay, I'm going back out and uh, I'm going to just click directly on oh. there. Can you see it now? No, nope. I can I can only see your logo. Okay. All right. Like Annie said, we did test this. Okay, so let me try it one more time. You see the logo now, is that correct? I see the logo. Okay. Start broadcast. And you should see a white screen, is that correct? Yep, share, yes, share, share, device, device. share device. Okay. Audio on, audio on, turn it off. Okay, so now I'm going to the presentation. Yes, you, yes. Is that it? Yes, yes. Okay, good, <laughs> okay. Uh, so these are just some little technical things. We thought we had worked through all the way, but uh, at least it's working now. So anyway, like I was saying, this is a, this is a watercolor I did last year. And it's a recreation of uh, when I began my life in plein air painting in 1963. This is my childhood home in Winfield, Kansas. Now you're gonna hear the term in plein air often, so let's define it. It's a French term which means in the open air or simply put, painting outdoors. And now here's the thing, you really have to say it right. And I worked on getting it right over the years and I believe the correct, and if someone speaks French, please forgive me, but uh, from what I understand is en plein air, en plein air. So on the count of three, everybody say that together. One, two, three, en plein air. I didn't hear you, but I know you did a good job, <laughs> okay? Uh, but like I said, I'm from Kansas, so I'm gonna just pronounce it the, Kansas, the old Kansas way. So I'm gonna probably be saying in plain air. So um, for me, as I said, plein air painting means painting outdoors, but for me, it also includes scenes indoors if they're animated. For example, if there are people, animals, sunlight streaming through windows, anything that creates a changing environment for me can be considered plein air. So let me go to the very first series here, and that would be a series I'll call, I call Pastel Dina. And pastel dinas, uh, uh, primarily pastel paintings that I've done of Pasadena and Altadena. For about uh, five years back in the 80s, I worked exclusive, almost exclusively in pastels. Even though I am a watercolorist, I sort of uh, dedicated uh, all of that time to painting in pastels. But one of the things I discovered is that pastels are not that great for 
plein air, plein air painting. For example, I'd go out and with my pastels on the street and I'd come home with pastel dust all over my face and my wife would point it all out. <laughs> uh, but I was very colorful, I will say that. So uh, I, I did uh, switch back to uh, painting uh, in watercolors after a while, but uh, I really enjoyed pastel painting. Uh, this one right here, some of you may remember this or recognize this if you purchase one of my 2020 calendars. This is the southeast corner of uh, Colorado Boulevard and Arroyo Parkway. And that was the way it looked back in 1977. And no, I didn't do a calendar for 2021, but I hope to do one um, next year or for 2022. Anyway, on to the next one. This is that same corner. And this is the way uh, that same corner looked a couple of weeks later when I went back by. And again, I did a sketch of it and uh, took it home and did a painting of it. And uh, they were just tearing it down. And now old Pasadena is um, not as old as it used to be. So um, this one right here, here's, here's a plein air tip. And I'll, I'll be giving, giving you a few plein air tips as we go along. And this is sort of a cliche you've probably heard before. Uh, it says, uh, sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than for permission. So my wife and I were in a coffee shop and I asked the owner, I said, uh, can I take a picture of my wife in here? And for some reason, she got very angry at me. It's like, you know, I don't know why, but she didn't want me taking any pictures there. So I asked one of the baristas if he had a sheet of paper because for some reason I didn't have anything with me at that time. So he gave me a sheet of lime notebook paper and I sat down at the uh, counter and uh, sketched her precious coffee shop with her looking on. And I later did this pastel at home. Uh, but uh, like I said, sometimes you just need to go for it because if you're on a street corner and you go in, if you ask a store owner if you can stand in front of their store and do a painting, they might probably or probably will say no. But uh, if you start the painting and they come out and look at it, they'll say, oh, how nice, and they'll just leave you alone. So that's kind of my attitude towards that. Uh, this is these two young ladies are my granddaughters. This painting is called Let's Read Out to Dina. And uh, they posed for me in the Bob Lucas Library. And uh, the, the lady there is a, was a volunteer teacher. Her name is Miss Washington. And now all of my daughters are grown and granddaughters. I have three daughters and three granddaughters and all of them uh, have their college degrees. So I'm real proud of all of my kids. Uh, this next one here is an Amtrak station or the Amtrak station uh, in 1980 in Pasadena. This is what it looks like now, but now there's a mes metro station there and a restaurant and it's on the corner of uh, Raymond and Del Mar. This is uh, me actually painting that uh, Amtrak station back in about 1980. My wife took the picture there for me. And uh, as I mentioned, I was working exclusively in pastel at this time or almost exclusively. So I decided to attend an international convention in Albuquerque. And that's where I met the founder of the organization and her name was Urena, Urena Christy Tarbot. And we uh, formed an instant bond that very day. And Urena was a very uh, major influence in my art and life. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about her. She grew up in an orphanage and kind of had a, a sort of a rough childhood, but she was a very uh, gentle and uh, giving person. She taught workshops around the world and achieved great success as an artist. And this is Urena here. I did, a, did this painting of her at a plein air event. And I actually did this one on my iPad. Uh, my wife and I were very close friends with Urena. And you may say, just how close of a friend were we? Well, this is how close we were. <laughs> she was, Urena was actually uh, somewhat like my older sister. And you, you see in this picture, Urena is actually taking a picture of my wife 
as my wife was taking a picture of her. And Urena liked to joke around a lot, but like I said, she was a very special person. In the background, you're gonna see, you, you can see a ranch and this ranch is Reagan Ranch, also known as the Western White House. And it's the home of, <clears throat> excuse me, President Ronald Reagan. Urena's husband, Bob, was the commun communications director for President Reagan. When she invited me and a few other artists to paint there, I, I said to her, uh, Urena, I didn't vote for Reagan. <laughs> and she said, I don't care. You and Peggy have to come to the ranch. So Peggy and I have been there a, a number of times as, as we've gone back to paint. She was a true friend. Urena was a true friend who put a reputation on the line for me more than once. And this is one of the paintings I did uh, at the ranch. And um, as I said, we went back numerous times. So I have quite a few paintings of that, uh, that, that ranch. Okay, so now let's move on to the next uh, series of paintings. And this one is called Hollywood Back Lots. And here's a tip uh, for those wanting to paint in plain air. And I say, if you've never done it before, just take a leap because a uh, leap of faith into plein air painting is also a leap of adventure. And you're going to hear some of my adventures in a few minutes. I worked in the, the, in the entertainment industry for over 25 years. Um, I did a lot of lunchtime paintings over the years, but uh, what they really paid me for is being a set painter and a, an occasional scenic artist. Uh, this is a, a sketch that I did. Uh, while the movie Stir Crazy was shooting many years ago. And from the left to right to the right, uh, two actors, I don't know their names, but uh, beside them are Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. And I had a great, great time working on that show. Uh, this is what I, I mostly did when I did sketches of people, I mostly did sketches of coworkers. And these are some of my coworkers uh, from left to right. The first one is a painter, and we all called him Hollywood uh, because he liked to be called Hollywood. He, he worked as an actor when he was younger, and primarily bit roles, but he always carried himself like he was a superstar. So uh, that, that's Hollywood. Next to him was, I don't remember this uh, painter's name, but he was an alcoholic, unfortunately. And I actually uh, sketched him out on a back lot uh, asleep sitting on a bucket with his uh, bottle of booze in front of him. And at that time, uh, alcohol, had, well, alcohol had been a big problem for many years before I even got there. But when I got there, drugs were really starting to affect the industry. So they, they set up some programs to really help those who are struggling with that, which I'm glad of that. Uh, next to him was is a painter we called Stage Brace. And we call him, called him stage brace because often he would be found leaning, leaning against the back of a stage wall, talking on a phone. And as you can see, it's a real phone. And we, there was no such things as cell phones back in that day. Can you believe that? That's how old I am. Anyway, uh, next to him is a, a young lady named Lisa. And she at the time was the only black uh, female painter in the industry. And unfortunately, she didn't uh, quite make it in the industry. She was, that just wasn't cut out for her. But the lady below her, Wanda, she was tiny, but she could outwork just about any man, any man on the set. So I enjoyed watching Wanda. Below uh, her is a guy named Elmer. And Elmer was the grandpa on the stage. And he always had a good story to tell about the good old days even though they weren't all that good sometimes. So here I am. Um, this is um, my paint kit here. And this kind of a large paint kit because I had the opportunity to start running shows about 10 years after I got into the industry. And they call a show lead a show dog. So I was a show dog. And I actually wrote a self-published a small book uh, and it was a lexicon on terms that painters use. So that was uh, one of my uh, fun times in the industry. 
Here is a, a set that, uh, that I did, a painting I did in Detroit. We went to Detroit to work on a movie, the movie Eight Mile, which starred Eminem, the hip hop artist. And one of the things, you always end up having some strange experiences on these sets. And something happened here. There was a security guard that lived in the trailer park and he didn't like us being there. So one day he came out and threatened to shoot, to shoot one of us if we didn't leave. Well, we left right away, but we did return the next day and he was gone <laughs> and I never saw him again. Uh, here's some of my scenic artwork. Uh, on the left, uh, this is for the movie Tron, and I'm glad I'm talking to people old enough who might remember that movie, movie because it was done quite a few years ago. Uh, and it was a Disney movie, and I was given the free reign to design and paint that, um, that uh, game box there. And also, another interesting thing happened. I'd only been on the show for a couple of days, even though I'd been going for a while, but I was put in charge of uh, laying out one of the sets because I was the only one that knew how to use a metric. The, I knew the metric system, and none of, none of the other painters knew it. And it was a very technical movie, so knowing that metric system really helped out. Uh, that The painting, the... Uh, photo in the middle is for a show called Lincoln Heights, and I painted that to take out on location so that they could uh, cover up some graffiti. Uh, and then the painting on the, the right of that is for a movie called Oceans 12, and I did restoration work on a lot of the paintings. I didn't do the paintings themselves, but they were some nice reproductions, and I had to do a uh, touch-up on a lot of those. Next, uh, this is for the show Mad Men, and um, this painting is called Hanging Beds. And I was always fascinated by seeing how some of the, just all of the different things behind the scenes we had to do to prepare a set. And these are grips hanging the green beds, and the green beds are where they would put the set lights. So it was almost like a tramp, uh, tramp or what did it, I call it? high wire act, <laughs> I don't know the right word, uh, but it was fascinating to watch them. This uh, painting right here, this site some of you have probably seen before, it's the Huntington Library Art Gallery. And we use this, actually use this to film in for the uh, motion, for the movie Oceans 12. And that painting you saw me touching up ended up inside the, uh, the art gallery there. And we were the very first film company to ever film indoors. Uh, they had had other film companies outdoors before, but never one indoors. And they watched us like a hawk. Okay, so this is this um, painting I did here is for the movie Too Fast, Too Furious. And one of the things that you end up doing once the filming starts is you spend a lot of time on dark stages. And so I had to learn how to paint in the dark quite a bit. Okay, so where were you when 9-11 happened? I'm sure that most of us remember that. Well, I was on the set of uh, Star Trek, working on a Star Trek TV episode. And someone came running on the stage and said that one of the, that a plane had struck the Twin Towers. So um, we ran out and went to the lunchroom and saw, actually saw the second plane hit. But anyway, uh, once that happened, as you know, all of the flights were grounded in this nation. I was scheduled to fly to Detroit uh, to work on the movie Eight Mile, and it actually took about two or three weeks before we could get, ever get a flight there. This next one, this, uh, this is a water tower at Paramount Studio, and I just love this scene. It's uh, next to the commissary. And it was on one of my lunch hours, and I just sat there and uh, painted this. And I just loved it with the pretty flowers there and the water tower and the Hollywood sign in the background. So now I'm going to move on to a, a different series. And this one is a series that is, um, this is the one that is, is dearest to my heart. And I'll show you some of those paintings in a minute. And it's uh, somewhat on pause now because of the pandemic, but I expect to get back to it soon. 
Uh, let me read a quote to you, and it's by Plato. He said, we can, e we can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark, but the real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. And I, like a lot of people, ran from the light for many years, but eventually I became a follower of the one known as the light of the world, and for that, for me, that would mean Jesus, Yeshua, and I became a follower. And so this series is called uh, Jesus in, Pl in Plain Air, and um, the acronym is J-E-P-A, and that has another French sounding um, uh, acronym, and I call this JAPA. And isn't that a romantic sound, JAPA, <laughs> for a series? So um, the most effective way I knew to, sh to shine that light was from my easel. Curious, curious onlookers would stop by my easel to watch me paint. I discovered that people will often tell uh, strangers things that they wouldn't even tell someone close to them. And I think the art had a lot to do with it. I've heard some fascinating stories on the, tree on the streets. And as people tell them, I tell them how the Bible addresses their situation. I don't preach, I simply offer information. I took Japa to the streets of Hollywood about 20 years ago. And from Hollywood to Harlem and points in between and beyond. And uh, this is one of the scenes or several of the scenes I did in Hollywood. Uh, this is, these two here are on Sunset Boulevard. And some of you may recognize that if you've been down Sunset Boulevard, Jim Henson Studios, and of course, who can't overlook an in and outs hamburger stand. I love that place. <laughs> okay, so let me direct your attention first to this painting in the center. It's uh, Hollywood Boulevard in Highland. If you go west on Highland, uh, you're going to run into the fancy uh, retail shops. Groman's Chinese Theater is there, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and tourists, lots of tourists. If you go east on Hollywood Boulevard, you're going to find abandoned buildings and abandoned people, lots of abandoned people. And I went east. Here's an inter interesting character I met. I call him the shower cap singer. He stepped up to my easel and asked for me for money. And I said, I'll give you some money if you, add, if you let me paint you. And he said, okay. And I was a little shocked because he said yes, and a little intimidated because that was the first time I had ever painted anyone on a street corner. So here's his story. He said he came to Hollywood from New York where he had been performing in Broadway musicals. He said his cousin was a TV producer in Hollywood, so he moved here hoping to get an acting job, but he said his, his cousin turned his back on him and now he was homeless. I didn't know if he was pulling my legs, so I said to him, sing for me, and he did. He literally, and I mean literally, stopped uh, traffic on Hollywood Boulevard. He had a beautiful voice, and I'm sure it carried all, all of the way to West Hollywood Boulevard. That uh, was a, an amazing experience for me and um, something that I, I will never forget. And I, I reminded him, I said, you know what? Uh, there's someone that was also abandoned himself and that was Jesus. And I said that he had a voice that could reach people without a microphone also. So he was a great person to meet. This next one right here, uh, on a different day, I was painting an upholstery shop. And a couple of men came out and they were staring at me. One walked across the street to check me out and I could tell he was probably suspicious of me. And after we, we talked for a while and he watched me paint, he said to me, come over when you're finished and let me sing for you. <laughs> and I'm thinking the blinds are closed, the doors are closed. And I'm thinking, ah, I don't think so. After he returned to his shop, I sent up a prayer, felt comfortable, comfortable about it. So I went for it. I went over, knocked on the door, and he let me in. And when I got inside, he had a recording studio in his upholstery shop. And he said, uh, he, he offered me a drink. I said, no, thanks. I'm working. 
he offered me a smoke. I said, nope, I stopped. And so he started singing. And his, here's his story. He was an Elvis impersonator in Las Vegas. However, he couldn't leave Los Angeles because the courts had put an ankle tracking bracelet on him. So he had to stay within the city limits. But the thing I found out is that he just needed someone to perform for him, to, to perform for. And I had a great time painting him as, as he performed. And I, I said to him, you know what, you're, you're a lot like the Apostle Paul. You both have an urge to share your passion, but sometimes you're restricted from traveling. But they found a way to fulfill their purpose. And I think that's what we should all do is find a way to fulfill our purpose, even in challenging times. So Japa went from the streets of Hollywood to Harlem. I was on Malcolm X Boulevard here just hours before Hurricane Sandy struck on November 28, 2012. And as, as I was painting, it actually started sprinkling uh, before I could finish the painting. While I was there, I met a man whose parents once owned the brownstone on this corner. And he said the gentrification pushed him out. I said, hey man, Jesus uh, had to leave his home and go to Egypt for a while. And he came back and I said, if he came back, your parents can too. So let's uh, go on to another. This is this is kind of, this right here is sort of a subset of the Japa series. And I call this my liquor store series. There'd been a rash of shootings at liquor stores around the year 2005. Uh, so I went to, uh, to all of the liquor stores in Altadena to paint there. So first I set up across the street and I painted the liquor store. And then I went back and set up on the liquor store property and started painting. And I got a chance to meet a lot of the street people. And so as they came over to watch me paint, I uh, gave them words of warning and words of hope out of the scriptures. So that's uh, one of the things I did there. And it's interesting to kind of calm down for, at those liquor stores. And uh, I didn't hear of any more shootings after that. So here's another plein air tip. This is something that if you go out on the streets to paint, when painting around signs, don't stand under them for shade because birds like to perch on them and give you gifts, give gifts to people below. <laughs> so, uh, I like to paint in pretty pretty places as well. And uh, from the top row uh, right, uh, this is the Midway ship in San Diego. Next to that, I'm at the County Muse LA County Museum of Art. And again, the County Museum of Art. Lower, the bottom row, again, County Museum of Art. Uh, next to that is the... Um, that's Ports of Call. And this final one, this was an interesting lady. She was a uh, Formula One journalist. And she said that she had actually had an opportunity to, to drive a Formula One car. And the year I was painting there, they were still having Formula One races in, um, in uh, Long Beach. So uh, let's quickly go just through a few more that I did. This was... Um, in Ghana, West Africa, where I took the gospel there. And actually I was visiting my daughter primarily, but uh, I did get a chance to get out. This is um, in Brazil, a place called Iba Porunduva. And an interesting place about this, the thing about this is that this little community was divided where half of it was sort of modern architecture. And the part where you see me painting uh, is the same type, same style of architecture that you would find in Africa way back during the time when the slave trade started. And most of the people that lived here were descendants of slaves uh, from Africa. Okay, on this next one, this is uh, in Mexico. This is Ensenada, Mexico. And this one here is in the United Kingdom where I had a chance to um, to paint and kind of run in, ran into some challenges because the people there were not too accustomed to 
having me out on the street corner, a foreigner out on the street corner. I won't go into detail about some situations that I ran into, but I had a great time. This last one here in this series, this is Mulheim, Germany. Um, I could have shared here, but the problem I had that I, had, I didn't have an interpreter, but I did have a lot of people standing around and watching me paint there. So let's move on to the next series now. And now I'm sort of going back to my Hollywood days. And back in uh, 1985, there was an, an extended strike in the movie industry. And the producer said, no, you guys continue to go to, the, go to work. But the teamster said, no, you're not coming to work. And they set up, uh, they, set, they blocked all of the gates to the studio. So uh, we were all out of work at that point. And I had a young family, so I had to find another source of income. So what I did, I went to, um, to different real estate agencies in Altadena and Pasadena. I pitched the idea to them of placing drawings in newspapers instead of uh, photos for their listings. And a lot of them went for it. And so I would uh, go out and take pictures. I would take pictures and then come home and, and paint the and do the drawings. And after I did the drawings and did the brochure for them, they would often um, ask to have the, the, the uh, drawing painted and I would paint it and they would give it to their clients as a gift. Uh, and this is one of the drawings that I did. And I also did floor plans. And so I would go into homes and with my tape measure and do a floor plan. And again, um, they made brochures from these. So I finally retired from the movie industry back in 2011. And that's when I started doing uh, portraits or paintings of homes for private individuals and not the real estate industry because the real estate in industry had sort of dried up by then and uh, technology had moved to the point where they could actually do a lot of the things through technology that I was doing through hand paintings. So I started doing uh, paintings for uh, homeowners and I'll just show you a few, few of those. And this one right here, I'll just uh, mention the name of the, uh, the initials of the homeowner. This is for RC. This one right here was for DV, a home in Altadena. This is a home in Pasadena for a lady and her family. She actually worked in the movie industry herself. I didn't know her, but uh, she worked at Disney. Uh, this next one here is for a homeowner, CT in Pasadena. This next one here is for a homeowner, homeowners, J and K, K's parents. And this is on, uh, well, I won't give the street, but this is in Altadena. And this final one here that I'll show you is for a homeowner in Pasadena, MC. Now to the final series for the day. And if you, any of you follow me on Facebook, you're gonna recognize some of these paintings. And the, the uh, name of the, the series is Two Dinas, Altadena and Pasadena. So this is a uh, Roman's bookstore and um, as was mentioned earlier, uh, there's uh, I still have paintings there, and it's called they they've for a long time had something called art on the stairwell, and I had some artwork probably 15 years ago there, but uh, I brought my artwork back uh, late last year, and it's still there, still in the store, and we don't know how long it's going to stay, but as long as it is, I'm glad. So I'm saying to everybody, go in and to Romans, support our local uh, retailers, buy some books there at Romans, and while you're there, buy some paintings. This is a, um, this is Farnsworth Park in Altadena, and that's the Davies building, and I painted that several times. This right here is the Pasadena Playhouse, another one of my favorite places to paint. The next one is uh, the Altadena Arts Magnet School. And this is where students can go in and create art at in the Kenny Art Studio. 
thank you very much. I have a studio there in the school. So that, that was fun to, to see that happen. Uh, another one of, one of my favorite places to paint is um, the Green Hotel. And uh, there's, there was an artist by the name of um, Charles White who actually had a studio in this part of the Green Hotel. And this is uh, the fire station number 12. This is in Altadena. So I have other series, but I won't try to get to any of those uh, because of, of time. But I want to end, end with something really special. And that is Quilts and Crafts by my wife, wife Peggy. She makes some gorgeous quilts and fabric art. And if you look at some of these quilts up close, you'll just see so much detail in them. I don't know how she does it, but uh, she does some beautiful work. And she gives a lot of a lot of these, uh, a lot of her quilts. She does makes baby quilts also, and she gives those away to hospitals and others in need. So really special to see see her work. So here's one final uh, plein air tip. And that is don't push people away when they come around asking questions or making comments while you're painting. And I've seen stories of how artists will leave a dog by their, their easel so people won't come close to them. And I'm saying, let people get close. Be gracious because they might bless you with a memorable story or show you an amazing ability. This young man here was an autistic savant. He was a what, what's called a human calculator. Uh, he could just, you could say things to him and he would bring a numerical value to it. And I would check him out and he would be right every single time. And he had, he had a pretty difficult time speaking, but he could actually quote large portions of the Bible. As you can tell, I love plein air painting. I love meeting people. I'm pretty quiet if I'm not behind my easel, but when I am, I just uh, enjoy getting out and sharing my artwork and also hearing some really amazing stories. And I hope you have enjoyed some of them. So thank you very much. I'm glad that uh, I was able to share some of this artwork uh, with you and uh, Please visit me at kennyarts.com. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Annie. OK. OK. I was just <laughs> waiting for you to uh, take that down so I wasn't echoing in the. <laughs> All right. Yeah, OK. There you are. OK. That was, that was amazing, Kenny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I, you I so much. It. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm going to remove your spotlight so that uh, if uh, you can just go to gallery view and see everybody there. Okay. Um, there's lots of uh, nice comments coming in on, on the chat. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start off with a question. Um, do you take commissions to paint people's houses? Not anymore. <laughs> I, 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 I retired from that. Uh, let's see, I think in November of last year, in order to work on my memoir, which I'm telling through artwork. So I had to really pull back from all of that. So maybe I'll, I'll do it again, but not now. <laughs> okay, well, our, our 1920s Spanish house will just We'll wait for you. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's see. Um, as the nice comments uh, come in, let me see where the questions are. Um, okay, Leah wants to know, um, what percentage of your artwork do you do in ink? Um, I almost always sketch in ink. I don't sketch in pencil. I like to go directly in ink. And um, if you look at the paintings, the uh, the the um, found I'll call it the foundation is in ink, and then I paint over the top of it. So imagine just doing a sketch and then painting over the top of it. So if as far as percentage, I don't know, um, ten percent maybe. So like the ink work that you were doing for the realtors, that that you don't do that anymore, correct? No, I don't. The realtors, I I stopped doing those for realtors. 
back in the late 80s. And that was because they were real busy for a while and then the, the industry dried up and I went back to the studios. And then once I started painting houses again, I just did them for uh, individuals. All right, so uh, Sally has a question. Uh, did you ever know a scenery painter from Oklahoma named Woody Big Bow, a Native American? No, I didn't, no. Sounds like you could have shared some fun stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably could. Woody Big Bow, is, is, do you think he's in published anywhere? Um, Sally, is it somebody that you know? Oh, you're, you're, oh, I, sorry, let me, uh, um, I need to, I would, I, so I would always like to, I would always like to know okay. of other yeah. uh, painters. Okay, there you go, Sally. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I bought two paintings of his in Albuquerque in 1981, and uh, actually one of them ended up in the Oklahoma Cowboy Museum. They have exactly. a whole bunch of his work there, because he's a really fine artist as well. And, uh, but I know that he spent time in Hollywood. He died in 1988. And uh, I, I just wondered if maybe you'd cross paths with him. I never Woody, got to meet him. Woody Big Bow, his last name's Big Bow? Yeah. Big Woody Bow. Big Bow, yeah. Okay. And no. I'll, um, after this, uh, Kenny, I'll email you the text of all the chat that comes through. So you'll mm -hmm. be able to see all the nice things that people say. Um, oh, as you. well as you'll have Woody's name in there. <laughs> oh, good, good. Yeah, because if I can find out more about him, there may be a chance that well, I ran across book. him and didn't know it. If yeah. he worked in Hollywood, yeah. You can look him up. Okay, I'll do that. All right, so um, Cheryl Cates asks, how do you handle your compositions? I handle it, I don't plan those a lot. Um, if you look at my paintings and then look at the actual scene, you'll notice that nothing looks exactly the way it is. I will often move trees out of the way. Um, I'll put, I, I, I try to stay, stay true to the scene, but I don't try to do an exact replica of what I'm, what I'm painting. As far as composition goes, I don't plan it a lot because I would rather it be spontaneous and um, have that looseness to us. If I'm working on something indoors, I do a lot of planning so that things balance out right as far as the weight, the color, and things of that sort. So yeah, I'm pretty spontaneous. Uh, so Gail asks, when you sketch on your iPad, what program do you do, do you use? Do you sketch on your iPad or do you just, I think it looked like you were using an iPad. Yeah, I, I did one time. I used to, I did iPad work for several years. I don't do it too much now, um, but I use probably the program that I use the most is Procreate and uh, it does some pretty good uh, uh, work for art and Procreate is the one I use, but I don't really use it that often now. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Um, Joyce says, um, you amaze me that you catch the essence of otherwise mundane subjects. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is mundane to me. <laughs> I don't know. Great it's, just, it's just something I do. I just and and remember, I I started this over fifty years ago. So uh, someone asked me. I don't know if this. Maybe I'll wait and see if this question comes up. But if it doesn't, remind me at the end to get so one ahead. of my most asked questions. Yeah. So, no. Go ahead. <laughs> shall I do it now? Then. Sure. One of the most asked questions I get, especially when people see me painting on the streets, is how long does it does it take you to, to finish a painting? And my answer to them is one hour and 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that it takes one hour necessarily. Uh, it may take a little uh, longer, it may take it may take even less time, but it took me 50 years to get the technique where I can do that. So that's my answer now. 
<laughs> All right. Um, do we uh, do we have any other specific questions that uh, anybody? Uh, looks like uh, we're. Let's see if you can. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Who's an artist? out there, whether you're painting plain air or not. Okay, Cheryl, uh, great. We've got a lot yeah, of artists. Leah. Yeah, yeah. I'm on my iPad, so I can't really see your names that well, but I'm glad that they have, we have some other artists out there. And we, we've, I know a bunch of us are photographers, so okay. we'll count right. that as, as our art, even if we're not using our hands the same way. Yeah, and I paint because I can't take a good photo, so that's, <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> Oh, wow. and uh, Harry's a songwriter and photographer. Okay. Wow. I would expect that we have a, a lot of creative people yeah. here. Um, well, thank you again so much, Kenny. It's just really a, um, a wonderful treat to, to see your work. And now we all have yet another reason to go to Romans because we always have reasons to go to Romans. I mean, that's, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Please and go to was, Romans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Connie just wants to double check. You are doing your calendar next year? As far as I know. <laughs> yeah. I won't say absolutely yes, but um, I do intend to do that. So anybody that's on my mailing list will find out and uh, or you can go to my website and you'll find out there. But, and they, uh, get, they get uh, on your mailing list by going to your website? Right. If they go to my website, there's a place to get on my mailing list and uh, you'll hear from me. I don't send out a lot of um, emails, so you don't have to worry about getting spammed by me. In fact, I should probably do it more often, but uh, at least a couple of times a year, <laughs> you'll hear from me. Um, okay. And then uh, the website URL, it's, uh, it's kennyarts.com. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. Yes, K E N I A R T S dot com. Okay. Let me and you'll see a lot of my other work there. So you can go there and check that out. A R T S dot com. I'm just putting it in the chat. Um, and, uh, you can, uh, people can email you through your website, correct? Yes. Yes, there's a yeah. contact link there. If they contact me, I'll get their email address. You'll get mine and we can stay in touch that way. You know, I think yeah. you're, it'd be nice to have some of your things kept in the uh, Pasadena Museum of History because you're kind of immortalizing some houses that look like they're kind of historic. Well, if you are in charge of that, I'll be glad right. to talk about that. <laughs> That's an idea. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're not you're not the first person to, to suggest that. I don't. I've never contacted them about that. But uh, we'll would. see. You know, we'll That's see. True. I'm I'm not the best um, promoter around. Uh, <laughs> so, if someone wants to help me out with that, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Just take your pad of paper over there and uh, paint their building, and they'll come out and talk to you. <laughs> Actually, I, I have painted it, so, yeah, but they, did, they didn't come out. I've painted there a couple of times, but I don't guess they saw me. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's been really great and I think inspiring to a lot of us. Uh, and just to look at things, I, I love the answer that nothing's mundane. And that's, uh, <laughs> that's a, a really, that's a great way of looking at it, a great way of looking at, uh, at life. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Kenny, so much for sharing you. Uh, your work and your life with us. Really exciting and wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, and so if you all want to uh, unmute yourselves for a moment, and a big round of applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you, people. Thanks that's, for coming that's on. What, I, uh, thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. what's fun about Zoom. You see 25 people up. Thanks. I just figured Thank out you. how to unmute myself. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your time, Kenny. Thank you. I'm glad you're here and to share it with. And I, like I said, I'm glad to meet all of you people. And maybe we'll have a chance to meet on the street someday. Zoom is okay for this time, but yeah. once we're through with all of these lockdowns, I hope to see some 
real people. Real people. Face to face. <laughs> It was a lot of fun, and I want to tell everybody they need to buy his stuff. His prints are so cheap, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Bye, thank you. I didn't want to say, put it that way, but, but yes. <laughs> oh, they're cheap. <laughs> Reasonably <laughs> priced. Expensive <laughs> investments. And amazing. Reasonably yes. priced. They look uh, like, oh, as, I mean, they're as just. Lo as, long as, as long as you're buying them, call them what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and remember, it's it's always a good time to support an artist. Hi, Joyce. Hi. Thank you. Back into it. Great to see you. Great to see you, Kenny. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Kenny, you did great. Linda Thank and I, you. I appreciate I that. We love you, I don't Kenny. know if I'm seeing everybody or not, um, because... You can, you know, I don't know if on your iPad you can, you can scroll through. No, I did. Okay, yeah, I, I see more. Okay, here we go. I'm hey, sorry Kenny. to see you folks. I see you now. Gosh, Kenny. Joyce, yes. Uh, <laughs> don't hang up, everybody. That. <laughs> no, I see you. <laughs> Patricia, yeah. Uh, Robert, Robert, all of these people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, a lot of people are don't have their cameras on, but yeah. those those of you who hi. do, I've seen. I've Hi, Jane. Hi, sweetie. Thanks, there, but yeah, there you are. Grace, good to see you. Okay. And I'll do my shout outs. Hey, Janet. Hey, Irene. Hey, hey Donna. <laughs> to all my social hour folks out there. Hi, yeah. Amy. So now I've, now I've seen everybody. Thank you so much. I'm really glad. All right. Thank you Hi, all. Kenny. Have a good day. Thank and we'll you. Nice meeting you, Kenny. Right. Andy Thank you. Thanks again. Right. It was wonderful. Okay. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.